Okay, YouTubers, here's how you reinstall a valve body with one hand. Basically, what you'll do is you'll use some of that transmission assembly goo to fill in the voids where you're going to put all your check balls in your case. Then you push your case or your check balls up into the goo that'll hold it. Then you put your case to separator gasket, then your separator plate, you uh, bolt it into place using your electronic kick down, and it'll hold your plate up against your case two way, that's two forms of how to hold the check balls in the case where they go. Then you'll see where I've taken kind of longer 5 16 bolts and just cut the heads off of them. You use those as guides for your valve body itself and your valve body to separator plate gasket. But the trick is, is you gotta use a pair of vice grips so that you can let the valve body kind of sag or hang down a little bit so that you can get your tubes inside the case so that you can get them installed. Otherwise, if you put the valve body to the case first, you can't get the tubes to clear. So right now I've got all my check balls in, all my gasket, separator plate, and I was getting ready to start zipping these things up a little bit. <clears throat> now I realize I hadn't made any video on it. And again, I do apologize guys, I broke my phone. Finally got my insurance replacement. And I know this is a little bit wiggly, but I'm freehanding underneath here. Trying to get this done real quick so my neighbors don't bitch too much. So anyway, I'm getting ready to put the valve body back in and I've got some updates on what I found and didn't find. Alright, I wanted to show you guys all I found so far during this disassembly process was I pulled the valve body off, went through, pulled every valve out of the valve body, cleaned and checked the bores, cleaned all the spool valves, everything. I couldn't find anything. That little missing piece of O-ring that I've been looking for is still MIA. I don't know if it's inside the torque converter. I don't know if it could have been trapped up inside of the original fiber filter I removed. I don't know. I just can tell you it's not in the valve body itself. The valve body has been completely disassembled, cleaned, reassembled, and reinstalled in the vehicle. But when I pulled the governor assembly out of the side, rear side, passenger rear side, which basically is just this four bolt cover, and then you have your governor assembly, and I guess this has been disassembled, I'll get to that in a minute. But when I pulled it all apart, I found these pieces. See if you guys can see that. That little black piece of plastic. And there's this little piece of, um, I don't know what this is. I don't know if this is fiber. It's just like a little piece of a gasket or something. Hopefully you guys can see that on my finger. There's a little half moon C shape. This and that piece of plastic were inside the governor uh, spool valve. Well, I don't know. I'm, it's got to be my fault because I'm the one who installed it. But when I rebuilt the transmission, I thought I followed the directions. Because I've never used these before, but I was trying to be super careful. This is your case screen. Actually, this is a malformed, crushed, deteriorated case screen that goes into the actual aluminum case where your fluid tubes insert from your valve body. Well, apparently I must have put it in the wrong hole. That's what I'm assuming. I'm just going to have to own that. Because what happened was, as I pushed this down in the case, then when I inserted my uh, tubes that go from the case to the valve body it literally pushed this piece straight down into the governor assembly and you can see what it did it literally just mashed it over sideways 
down into the governor assembly and that pl piece of plastic I showed you just a second ago is off of that filter. Now, whether this kind of contamination in the governor assembly can cause uh, the transmission to not want to shift from first to second, uh, to cause it to slip excessively, I have no clue because I'm not an expert at these uh, automatic transmissions. But this, this contamination and this issue with that filter is literally the only thing I found wrong with it so far. Now, when you pull your governor assembly out, it's going to have the weights up here. Actually, they're over here on these. They attach here by these pins that you actually have to cut the end of it off to disassemble. I chose to take the weights off of my governor assembly because I was too afraid I would break this fiber or plastic gear by trying to R and R that little roll pin to take the, or try to get the spool valve out that way. But if you look, this spool valve right here has to move freely. If anything impedes this spool valve from moving freely inside your governor assembly then the governor can't do its job. So what I'll do is I'm going to make sure everything inside of here is perfectly clean. There's no debris. There's no burrs. Uh, nothing that can impede this valve. Now once I get it reassembled using these number six finishing nails, you basically just push it through where these little cutoff, these pins I cut out were, and then you bend the sharp point over where it can't pull back. And that's how you reassemble the governor weight assembly. But whenever you have it working properly, learn this on YouTube, by the way, when you do your weights in and out against the springs, which is these things, uh, that valve should move up and down inside this uh, housing. You can see it through these little windows when you operate those weights, that valve is supposed to freely and easily move up and down. So let me get this thing more towards reassembly and then we'll tune back in. All right, guys, just in case you didn't know, the weights, the wing weights is what I call them, in your governor assembly are what control your wide open throttle automatic shifts. When you're shifter is in drive and you just punch the throttle where the transmission shifts is con is controlled by your governor assembly via these weights that swing out under centrifugal force so if you do a research do a little bit of research on youtube or google or whatever you'll see that you can buy kits and uh, interchange weights to put lighter wing weights in there Plus, there's different spring springs that you can change to dial in your wide open throttle so that the transmission can shift by by itself at what RP, whatever RPM you decide you would like the engine to shift at. Well, I uh, basically pulled mine apart. These wing weights start out square with a little tab sticking off of the bottom. I just wanted to clean up the, the way they looked I only removed about not quite two grams of material because these things were starting out at 11 grams kind of a heavy 11 and I think I've got this let's see that one's at nine let's see what this one's at here that one's at a 10 which is, you know, these aren't the most accurate scales in the world. So you might re-tear it and then re-measure it. But if you do some research online, or specifically there's a video on YouTube. See, like right there, they're both coming out at 10. They're a pretty light side of 10. They're a low side of 10 grams each. 
which they were uh, on 11, uh, blinking between 11 and 12 when I pulled them out. Well, I didn't want to get too aggressive with removing material because I don't know for sure where that go Pontiac Governor Assembly shifts at the factory. But I wanted to clean them up, give them a little bit better shape, and record the weights of the uh, wing weights in the Governor Assembly so that I have a good starting point to tuning that wide open shift. But I just wanted to kind of show you these wing weights before I started assembling the Governor. That way you guys could get an idea of those weights, what they do, how adding or removing weight will affect your wide open uh, shift when you're letting the transmission shift itself. So let's get to assembling this uh, uh, governor assembly. Well, as my luck usually has it, I end up having to drill out uh, all four of the holes on the body of the governor assembly. One, two, three, four. I had to drill out both the holes on both wing weights. One, two, three, four. The only part of this assembly that would actually receive the number six two inch finishing nail was this top plate. Nothing else had holes in it big enough, so just thought I'd share. Man, I will tell you, trying to get those springs back in behind those little wing weights that's a little challenging. You might use some of those cuss words you haven't used in a long time. But I got them. So let's put this piece of junk back in the car. See if it does any better. Just a real quick look at where the governor assembly installs into your Turbo 400 case. Because getting underneath my vehicle and trying to video that, that wasn't going to happen. So I just wanted to show you, you got four bolts with a little metal cover. It has a gasket. And when you have your uh, governor assembly, it'll just insert in that center hole and then it'll rotate, I believe, slightly clockwise going in and counterclockwise when you pull it out. Put it in, put the cover on, tighten the bolts. Not a big deal. Hey guys, I just wanted to do a little voiceover. I had the car running so you could kind of hear the cam and stuff, but it just made too much noise. So I just wanted to let you guys know that I am totally shocked and amazed that cleaning out the debris from the governor assembly actually fixed the problem. I don't even know how to respond to that. And I'm trying to be a little bit reserved because I don't want to take a chance on it just going bad on me tomorrow. Well, this will wrap up the video, guys. This is my current idol. 